How you guys doing? This is Chris Miliados, Do It Yourself and More channel. And today we're doing a uh, oil change on a 2008 Lincoln MKX. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have all of your materials set up and ready to go before you get things started. Uh, so you're going to want to go ahead and jack up your vehicle. Um, you're all, or if you don't jack it up, you can use Rhino ramps like what I have here. I got these off of Amazon. I think I paid like $70 for them, something like that. Just make sure to check the weight rating on it. Uh, that it can handle your vehicle. All right, with that being said, uh, I've already gone ahead and taken off the oil nut and have been draining the oil out of the, uh, the vehicle already. So I'm letting that drain. Uh, what you're gonna need for a 2008 Lincoln MKX oil nut is you're gonna need the 15 millimeter socket to be able to take that oil nut off. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'll show you what oil we're using today. Uh, we are using, for our oil, we are using the Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic. This vehicle does hold 5.5 quarts of oil. So you're going to need to get an additional quart uh, just to be able to top it off uh, correctly. Also, I went with a Motorcraft oil filter. Uh, since this is a technically a Ford vehicle, it is a Lincoln, but under Ford. Uh, we went ahead and got the Motocraft oil filter, okay? Now, with that being said, if you look underneath the vehicle here with me, I will show you, you can see that it's already been draining all the oil out. And underneath the passenger side front tire, right back here is where you will locate your oil nut. Again, that's a 15 millimeter socket you're gonna need to take that off with. Your oil filter is actually located right here. So it's uh, close to the front of the vehicle, very easy to access. Um, again, we're letting this continue to drain out completely. Once that's completely drained out, uh, we will go ahead and put our oil nut back on and tighten that back on. And then we will proceed with removing the oil filter and letting any excess oil drain out of that as well before we um, lubricate the rubber gasket on the oil filter and reinstall it to the vehicle before adding your oil. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right guys, so now that our oil filter has been removed, uh, we're letting that drain out, which it pretty much is done draining at this point. Um, you wanna be careful as you take it off, especially if you were recently driving, that oil will be very hot. So I would suggest having gloves or a uh, thick terry cloth towel to uh, remove that with in case it drips on your hands, you don't wanna get burned. Um, so anyways, uh, this vehicle has been sitting, so we're fine. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and take our new oil filter and what you're gonna do is just dip your hand in the old oil down here and you're just gonna rub that oil right around the gasket. And what that's gonna do is just lubricate the gasket there and uh, make it easier for tightening and removing the oil filter the next time you go ahead and do a oil change. Um, so you just lubricate it like that and it's ready to install. All right, so now that we got our um, oil completely drained out, we got our oil filter removed and completely drained out. The oil nut has been replaced as well as the new oil filter installed. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is obviously put in your oil. So again, uh, you're gonna need 5.5 quarts uh, for a 2008 Lincoln MKX. It's probably the same for a Ford Edge as well. Uh, for this vehicle, they recommend using Motocraft is what they recommend, uh, but you just need uh, 5W20. Uh, I went with Pennzoil this particular time. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead and get this removed. And uh, just to let you know, your oil dipstick is right here. So it's right next to it to be able to check the levels after you're done. You want to make sure that you have your funnel. This way you don't have oil leaking all over the place because if it does leak over the place and you're driving and the engine's hot, it may smoke. Uh, you also want to make sure to have a cloth or a paper towel, something handy close by, uh, again, as you're removing this, so this way you're not dripping on any of the um, engine parts. All right, so we will go ahead and get this removed. What I like about these containers for the Pennzoil, by the way, 
is how easy they are to pour. They have two different separate handles. So whether you're grabbing from the top to pour as it's low, or you have a lot of fluid in here and you need to grab from the side, um, it just makes it a little more convenient and easier for pouring and less mess. Or at least that's the goal. and make it less messy, but I'm not doing a very good job of that right now. So I will have to do a little bit of wiping on here. Let me catch this real fast before it drips down any further. It's much easier to clean from the top than if it gets on the parts underneath. So that's why you want to have your rag handy, specifically for these reasons. Catch it at the beginning, and it's much better. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh, continue making a mess, I guess. <laughs> Shit. Excuse my language. Should we redo it? Uh, let's try this one more time. Like every time I start to pour, it like bubbles out. There we go. All right. So what I've just shown you is I explained what not to do, yet I went ahead and did the same fucking thing. And again, excuse my language for that. But, uh, you just want to have a good grip on this stuff so it's not getting all over the place and again if you do happen to drop it have your hand uh, towel ready so this way you can go ahead and wipe that up before it drips down further into the other end parts when it's on the top it's not too bad but if you get it down low it's a little harder to clean and your vehicle may smoke until that oil residue burns off there and you could use the old container to pour your old oil into if you have one of the drain pans that doesn't have a covered top so you can take it back to the auto uh, parts store for proper disposal of your old fluid and now we got our separate quart and again it's five and a half quarts so I'm only gonna pour half of this in there and I will go ahead and take a look at the dipstick and see where it is as measuring on there. Let's see. And you can also check on the sides here. They got that clear spot so you can see uh, how many fluid ounces you've already poured in. So you can go a little bit more. Uh, I'd say that's about right. So, you got half, maybe a little bit less than half, but that's because I dripped some out too. So, Alright, so we're going to get this sealed off. Then you have a little bit extra if you ever need to top it off. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, take our funnel here and clean that off so that doesn't drip out on there. Always keep in mind if you're using a funnel for a particular fluid, do not mix fluids when you go to use a funnel again. I recommend either having separate funnels for the different type of fluids you use. Or if you do have to use the same funnel, make sure after each use, you are completely cleaning that funnel out very clean, very well. So any of the remaining fluid or residue that may be on from the previous job you've done is not mixing together and being put into your engine system or transmission or whatever it is that you're working on at that point. All right, got this all on here. So I pretty much got that all cleaned up, got our oil in, let's go ahead and take a look at our dipstick and see where our fluid's at. So the first one I'm just going to go ahead and wipe it down since we just did this oil change and put the new fluid in, we'll try to get a good reading on it. And as you can see there, it is full. And this is your minimum, maximum line on your dipstick. So, 
we'll clean it off. We'll do it one more time, just to be sure. Just in case anything rubbed off on the sides or anything. Set that in there, set it for a second. Come get on the stick, pull it back out. And again, you can see the fluid level is all the way up there. It's clean fluid, so it might be a little harder to tell, but it's there. At least from a visual aspect uh, to the naked eye, you can see it. If you didn't pick it up on camera, well, you'll just have to check it when you do it. And that's pretty much all there is to it for an oil change. Again, this is a 2008 Lincoln MKX. Um, you could use Motorcraft as what's recommended. Um, again, I went with Pennzoil this time, nothing wrong with using a different brand. Um, I did some research on some different motor oil brands and how they compare to each other. And the uh, Pennzoil uh, Ultra Platinum Full Synthetic or the Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil is ranked pretty close to the top there. Um, so I was really impressed with what I saw and some of the tests that I've seen in other videos and that's why I decided to go with this particular oil. Anyways, um, that concludes the oil change. You got everything put back together. Uh, you got your cap put back on, your oil nut is put back on, your fuel fil uh, oil filter has been reinstalled and is secured. Oil has been put back in the vehicle. You've inspected the oil dipstick to ensure that it is at the proper levels and wiped everything down. And that's pretty much all you have to do. The only other thing you may want to do is uh, you can either get them at the auto, auto parts stores or make something on your computer or just write it on a piece of paper and tape it to your window. Is just measure uh, your current mileage to when you want to do your next oil change, whether you do yours every 3,000 miles or every 5,000 miles or depending on what your vehicle recommendations are. I try to do mine every three to 4,000 miles is when I try to do it on mine. Um, because the more regular you keep up with your maintenance, the longer your vehicle will last and perform. Alright, so this concludes our vehicle, uh, video. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video or found useful information, please uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. That does help my channel. My goal is to reach a thousand subscribers so I can be able to help other people out there save money and show them how to do more stuff of uh, do-it-yourself. Uh, so this way um, I can keep my channel going. All right, and um, if you have any comments, leave them below. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.